Bonjour, bonjour. Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril. I have been a stem cell researcher for quite some time and this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare ingredients. And for today's video, I have my beautiful dog. His name is Guabao. He's now six months and almost um, two weeks and as you can see he's a little bit uh, sleepy and i know that some of you um, has missed him <laughs> so say hi Guabao. hello okay so for today's video i'm going to tell you why most of the time the concentration of uv filters mentioned on the package are pretty irrelevant and before i start i want to give you two examples so the first example is the Drunk Elephant, the sheer physical sunscreen that contains 20% of zinc oxide with an SPF of 30. And if you compare it to the one from Color Science, the Face Chill, this one contains 12% of zinc oxide, so almost twice as less as the one from Drunk Elephant, but it has an SPF of 50. And those two sunscreen only use zinc oxide as UV filters. And as you can see, with two different concentrations, you have two different SPF. And in this uh, striking case, the color science has a higher SPF than the one from Drunk Elephant, despite the fact that it has uh, less zinc oxide. And this is just simply to highlight that, yes, even if you have the concentration of filters, it doesn't mean that a higher concentration will protect you more. So like I have said many times on my channel, the first criteria when you are buying any type of sunscreen is to look at the SPF uh, rating and also the UVA protection when you can know it. And this is going to depend on where you live. So as an example, uh, this one, which is a Tinos of M-based sunscreen. This is one from the French brand Ducre. This is actually one of my favorite sunscreen that features a Tinozol M. This is the light cream dry touch. It has an SPF of 50 plus, as you can see here. So the SPF, so the sun protection factors, is the numbers that indicates you the level of protection against a sunburn. And the higher this protection is, and the higher the absorption in terms of UVB will uh, be, and also a tiny bit of UVA, because to get a sunburn, it is mainly due to UVB and a little bit of uh, UVA. And then if you are in Europe, you will see the UVA uh, sign, which is uh, really tiny on this sunscreen, with a circle around it. And that means that the UVA protection is a minimum of one third of the SPF using the Colipa methods. If you choose an agent uh, sunscreen, such as this one from Anessa, this is the whitening UV sunscreen gel. The SPF is 50 plus. It should be exactly the same as the one in Europe, but also in Australia and many countries because they use the um, ISO norm, which is basically an international protocol. In the United States, it is slightly different, but basically an SPF 50 plus should be exactly the same as uh, one in Europe and uh, Asia and etc. just in terms of SPF protection. For the UVA protection, the Japanese use the PA rating system and four pluses is the maximum. So it's translating to a PPD value of 16 or um, above. So like I said, the first important criteria when you are buying a sunscreen is first to you to look at the SPF rating and when you and when you can add the UVA uh, protection. So most of the time in Europe, you don't really have to think about it. If it is an Asian country, always choose for pluses. If it is in the United States, unfortunately, it is not uh, disclosed, but it has to be broad uh, spectrum. But you don't know if it is a super, I would say, low UVA protection or super high. This is something that is unfortunately not disclosed. In terms of SPF, I only recommend SPF 50 plus no matter your skin color is and the reasons is simply because the less uh, uv especially uvb that enters into your skin the better and for this a uh, higher spf is always better than an spf of 30 despite what you can read online there is a big difference between spf 30 and spf 50 plus just in terms of uvb you have 
twice as less UVB that goes into your skin with an SPF 50 plus compared to an SPF 30 and this is a big difference. I also have a pretty old uh, video to explain you all the difference between SPF 50 plus and SPF 30. Then once you have a look at the SPF rating and the UVA protection, this is the time when you can go and look at uh, the filters for many reasons. One is if you are intolerant to one of, of the filters, you know that they break you out for example or you are simply allergic to them you can also avoid them and it also helps you to have an idea of the coverage of the uv spectrum in all the cases the spf and also the uva protection are dependent on several factors the first one is of course the combination of filters simply because to achieve a very high um, spf and also a high uva protection factors you do need a combination of filters Unfortunately, you cannot really use only uh, one and it is very, I would say, difficult. The second criteria is what I call the redundancy of filters. So that means to have several filters for UVB, UVA type 2 and UVA type 1. The rest of the formula is also extremely important, what we call the vehicle. So basically all the solvent for the UV filters, for example. And the last one that is a major criteria is the dispersion of UV filters. So first, like I said, is the combination of filters because what will really impact the SPF and also the UVA protection is simply the combination of filters because not all filters filter UVB, UVA type 2 and also UVA type 1. And this is really important to have, um, I would say, a good blend between those filters to cover the full spectrum. Then, obviously, we also have the concentration of filters, like I said. This is true that by increasing the concentration in general of filters, it helps to achieve a higher SPF and also a higher UVA protection. But this, again, will really depends on um, all the other criteria. So it's not only by increasing those filters that you will achieve a higher SPF. And also, it could simply by increasing just one filters over another one that will help the formula to achieve a better protection. So if you are not new to my channel and if you are new to my channel, please consider to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little bell to not miss any of my new videos. You will know that one criteria that I always love to talk about is what I call the redundancy of filters because like I said it is better especially for high protection to have several filters for UVB, UVA type 2 and also UVA type 1 than only putting all your money in one filters and this helps obviously to achieve a higher protection against UVB and also UVA. Two examples of amazing sunscreen is for example this one from La Roche-Posay. This is the Anthelio the Ultra uh, cream. This one has an SPF of 50 plus, uh, UVA protection of 35 because La Roche Posay does disclose it, which I love about it. And this one has four different filters for UVB and also four different filters for UVA. And this is absolutely amazing. And like this, you ensure that UVB, also UVA type 2 and UVA type 1 are, I would say, fully absorbed. But keep in mind that whatever the level of protection, there are still UVs that will pass uh, through. And by the way, I have a video about uh, this one. Another one also that have an amazing combination of filters is the, also from La roche posay the Anthelios KA uh, Plus, but this one does have a significant uh, white cast. And also, again, you can check my video. The rest of the formula in terms of, uh, so not the UV filters basically, is also extremely important to achieve a super high protection. So it's not just about the concentration. For example, we do have some uh, amazing emollients that are also uh, very um, pleasing in terms of feeling because they are not uh, too greasy, but at the same time, they are excellent solvent for UV filters because most of the UV filters that we currently have uh, are only solubilized in uh, lipids, in fats, so they are basically quite greasy by themselves and you need something else that is also greasy. Hence why a lot of sunscreen currently are super greasy. And of course, if you choose a really nice amount that is not too uh, too too greasy. It helps to have a texture that is, uh, I would say, lighter and basically more pleasing. So, for example, the isopropyl sebacate is one of them. It is not too greasy um, on the skin, but also it has been shown that this emollient helps to dissolve 
really well the UV filters and you can actually use for the same SPF less UV filters by using this uh, solvent. So it also helps in that case to reduce the concentration. So last but not least, and this one is probably one of the most important criteria is the dispersion of UV filters because what could happen is that if the UV filters are not evenly distributed into the vehicle or the creams, you will have basically holes in the film that the sunscreen is going to make on your skin and therefore more UVs will pass and this is going to translate with a high with a lower SPF and also a lower UV protection and this is most likely what happens with the drunk elephant the dispersion is far from being optimal and this the dispersion is something that is very difficult to make because it requires a very high take uh, I would say chemistry to help to blend all those filters and also um, I would say in the factory, the emulsion process. So the way that uh, everything is mixed together in a way has to be extremely even at the molecular uh, state of the formula because the more even it is and the best coverage you will have, which translates with a higher SPF and a higher UA protection, which is also why it is such a bad idea to try to make at home sunscreen. This is something that is impossible and we don't have the tool at home to, uh, pro for example, mix zinc oxide probably to achieve a high SPF and I strongly discourage you to do something like that. So overall you will see that a sunscreen formula is very complex to do and you can achieve actually a higher SPF and a higher UV protection by using a clever blend of UV filters and also with a lower concentration. So it's not just about the concentration and overall it is pretty irrelevant. Also something that I did not mention, and this is a technology that is, uh, to my knowledge, mostly used by Jap in Japanese uh, sunscreen is simply the encapsulation of sunscreen that again, it helps to achieve a higher protection by using less UV um, filters and it also helps overall for the dispersion of those uh, filters because they are um, encapsulated. So for example, all the skin aqua use encapsulated uh, sunscreen filters. So comment down below and tell me if you have any uh, questions. I of course thank you so, so much for watching me. If you like this video, please thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little bell to not miss any of my new videos. Don't forget to follow me also on Instagram. I am Cyril Laurent. I have a lot of stuff around here and also really short um, videos, again, about sunscreen, uh, about skincare and also sunscreen, actually. I, again, thank you so, so much for watching me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.